you've made it to Cairo Hustle Live. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This episode is brought to you by Clothes for Cairo, Cairo Sushi, Barbara Eaton's 56 Day Chiropractic Boot Camp, California Jam, Move Well University, The Black Diamond Club, Pure Cairo Notes, The Cairo Dex App, Dr. Alok Trivedi, Cairo Spark, Cairo Graham, Chiropractic Wealth Management, Eight Weeks to Wellness, Integrative Freedom, and Element Mattresses. Let's hustle. Chester here, uh, going live with uh, Dr. Nick Spano. He's out in uh, Canton, Pennsylvania. I, I think that might be a big city. I'm not sure. I'm just joking. Not, not very. <laughs> and uh, I'm in the Grand Valley of Grand Junction, the Western Slope of Colorado, as I like to say, where no one lives. And uh, today's episode is brought to you over that shoulder. There it is up there, um, back there. Um, it's Chirogram. Uh, Chirogram is an Instagram marketing uh, business that if you want to get more followers and likes on your Instagram, um, Chirogram is a good route to go. It's a pretty uh, affordable rate that um that uh, we charge for that service. So if you are interested, Christopher Collins will be your resource for that. And you can go to chirogram.com. I will tell you that they've gotten me like 5,000 followers in like three months. So I, I think that that's pretty cool. That's awesome. So we're going to jump right in with you, uh, Dr. Nick. We're going to talk about your life college on. So you went to Adio Institute. Um, I'm not sure everybody knows what Adio Institute is. Would you mind enlightening our audience on what uh, um, well, school I is? I appreciate the privilege, the opportunity. Um, Adio Institute of Straight Chiropractic then became Pennsylvania College of Chiropractic. Uh, it was a school uh, that was started by Dr. Reggie Gold, and then later uh, the president became uh, uh, Dr. Joe Strauss, and the Adio Institute of Straight Chiropractic was formulated for the sake of preserving traditional chiropractic care, uh, and which had also evolved somewhat. It was a sister school to Sherman. There was another school in Southern California, and an entire accrediting body that had uh, arisen or been created uh, in an effort to um, compete with uh, the CCE at that time. As a, there's a lot of history there, uh, Joe Strauss being the, the expert. He's written uh, several books on what was then a movement to take back chiropractic, a movement that uh, went pretty far, but then uh, the ACA had the money, they had the, the uh, legal prowess, and it was shut down in the, um, somewhere in the early to mid-90s. Interesting. I, I know a lot of people don't know the historical reference of uh, ADO, uh, ADO Institute. So thanks for sharing on that topic. And, and as you got into school, um, you got really involved with uh, a, a technique that you helped uh, create called advanced muscle palpation. I, I would say I, I put my uh, spin on it. I didn't quite create it. Uh, it was uh, uh, originated or developed by Dr. Reggie Gold. Okay. I, I didn't have my uh, hand involved until I was a student and learned it there at Adio. And then uh, as I got involved, um, found myself uh, diving headlong into it because it, it was such a, a wonderful method. And very long story short, um, while I was still a student, the school asked me to um, ask if they could publish my notes on the subject. Nothing had been written about uh, advanced muscle palpation up to that time. And uh, they offered me free tuition. And no, no student is going to decline that. <laughs> I got two uh, quarters or two trimesters of free tuition for writing the manual on advanced muscle palpation, which at that time was called the Adio and Out. Well, that's really cool. And uh, what is uh, what is so important about this? I know you said it has some uh, way to detect subluxation. Uh, it is the body's way of detecting vertebral subluxation. So uh, the body monitors all its joints. I'm not sure how much you're aware of uh, neurology, but there's something embedded in all the muscles, all the ligaments, all the joints of the body called mechanoreceptors. And while a lot of people think there are five senses, 
there are at least six. These little sensors provide something called proprioception. I'm, I'm going to make it very simple for, you know, I think most uh, chiropractors are aware of proprioception. But proprioception is body position and movement sense based on little receptors that are embedded throughout the body. Make a very complicated story short, they are super abundant in the spine. And as you ascend the spine and, and, and get up into the cervical and upper cervical spine, those little receptors are extremely rich. And the reason that's important is they are constantly in conversation with the brain, with the central nervous system, informing the brain of position and movement. So when a vertebra is subluxated, when slightly misaligned and not moving correctly, the brain is aware of that subluxation. And then it said, sends information back to the same muscles from which that subluxation is, you know, that, that vertebra, that level is subluxated and tightens the muscles in a very sophisticated and a very, um, in, in a way that's guarding the joint, trying to correct that subluxation. The chiropractor benefits from that by uh, putting his fingers on those muscles, being able to detect this inborn mechanism, the only mechanism the body has for defending itself against subluxation. So in order to simplify that a little bit, I'm going to get, use a, a little prop here. And, sure. Um, so this is the primary, um, this is the, primary mechanoreceptor used within the belly of the muscles. And this is, uh, you know, representing a very small structure uh, within the muscles called the muscle spindle. It's going to bring back nightmares to uh, chiropractors that have been out of school for a while. But the muscle spindles are constantly interacting, interfacing uh, with the vertebra. And again, there's a lot of these uh, abundant in the spine and particularly in the upper cervical spine, telling the brain where the vertebra is and whether or not it's subluxated. The, um, the muscles are activated by these little receptors when the body senses a subluxation. And then the chiropractor has the opportunity to examine the muscles, determine where the body knows the subluxation is. And by the pull of the muscles, put together a three-dimensional picture I'll give you another prop here. Uh, let's say in the upper cervical spine, uh, there's, a, uh, again, there's an abundance of these little tiny receptors embedded in these muscles. And as C1 or C2 become subluxated, the muscles go to work uh, to try, uh, they're activated to try and pull that vertebra back into position. Chiropractic is about correcting subluxations. And if you've got this built-in mechanism, this sophisticated mechanism, and there's nothing more precise or sophisticated than these little mechanoreceptors that are informing the brain, here's where the problem is. It's like a red flag to the chiropractor uh, saying, this is where the body wants the correction and the direction that it wants the vertebrae to be corrected. So I got involved in that very early on as a student. And then soon after graduation, uh, I, I began my speaking career. But I, I don't want to take credit away from Reggie Gold, who was the one that uh, discovered this method some 50, 60 years ago. It was then brought to Sherman College, where uh, the instructors there saw the, you know, the genius of this. They got around Reggie, and they formed it into a system, then uh, ended up up at uh, Sherman Sister School, which, is at, which was Adio. Um, I got involved, and again, I had some influence on seeing some other things uh, in this method. See, you know, uh, giving it some new understanding. Yeah, that's, uh, it's fascinating that, you know, you had time to spend with Reggie. Uh, I know that he's a very historical figure in chiropractic. Um, what was it like to be around him? Well, um, there are a lot of people that knew Reggie much better than I did. I was uh, an acolyte or... Uh, uh, he was kind of a guru to me when I was very young. That's why I went to his school. Uh, the un unfortunately, soon after I got there, Reggie left Adio. So while I, I listened to many of his lectures and our family would follow Reggie when he was on the speaking circuit, um, that was before I was even a chiropractic student. And then we bumped into each other many times through the years, and he was always very gracious to me. Um, 
he often would send people to my seminars because when he would teach and then he would get to uh, students or chiropractors asking him, well, how do you find these subluxations? How do you analyze it? I love your philosophy, Reggie, but how do you actually do it? He, he, would, uh, he would say, go to one, one of the seminars, which would blow my mind. I'd get a phone call and, and somebody would say, uh, I'd say, well, how'd you find out about this? And they'd say, Reggie Gold told me to come to your seminar. And I'd be like, wow. Yeah, the guy that discovered the method itself, himself, and uh, he's sending people to my seminar. So it was a, it was a real uh, blessing. So do you really enjoy the teaching aspect of this technique? Um, yeah, in a sense, I'm a, a, I guess you'd say a natural born teacher. Um, I, you know, whatever it is I learn, I want to share that information. Um, I, I love teaching. Uh, it's a very hands-on seminar, but there's a lot of lecture involved for chiropractors to figure out how to use these muscles, how to find these muscles. Uh, there's a lot that we go through to get our hands on the spine. Before we get our hands on the spine, I do a lot of lecturing as well. But it's primarily a hands-on seminar. We typically prefer two-day seminars. I've been asked to do many one-day seminars, but um, there's so much to uh, so much to learn that uh, I'm doing some one-day seminars this year. But usually it's by day two people are saying, aha, I think I'm starting to figure this out. Yeah, it's a very intense seminar. Yeah, I like the aha moment. And when do people typically get this aha that they're actually learning well, from you and they can I'm, apply I'm, what they're I'm, learning? I'm pouring a lot of information into them on Saturday. If it's a two-day seminar, all day Saturday, we're uh, giving them instruction and we're breaking out into groups to, you know, there's a lot of portable tables in the room. And people are, are um, you know, focused on examining one particular spine at a table, and then they rotate to the next table. I'm going around the room and giving them guidance. Uh, so, you know, it's like, as they say, drinking from a, a fire hose on Saturday. <laughs> on Sunday, they come into the room, and we kind of regroup, review, put their hands on the spine. And a lot of times people come back to me on Sunday morning or after uh, we're done in the afternoon, they say, I finally, I'm finally getting this. Yeah. Yeah. It's frustrating to a lot of people at first. Yeah. And, uh, you know, me being a educated uh, advocate, um, is it like uh, palpation? It's a form of static palpation. Pal I'm sorry, static palpation, not motion palpation. It's very much simpler than motion palpation. Um, the, the uh, long and short of it is we're feeling these muscles as, again, they're guarding the spine and they're active over a segment of the spine. And we're, we're determining which muscle is active on which side to figure out which way the body wants to correct that subluxation. It's really the best way to honor innate intelligence if you're using its own inbuilt, inborn, innate mechanisms to determine where it believes the subluxations are. And it's, again, all based on a very sophisticated feedback loop, a reflex loop of the uh, muscle spindles, these uh, mechanoreceptors that are offering the brain, constantly offering the brain information. I apologize. I think my phone just interrupted that. Uh, it's still, you're, you're still going. Okay. So uh, it, it's, it's constantly, uh, the brain is constantly apprising joint position. When it finds a subluxation, how else is it going to correct a subluxation except through the muscles? But we as chiropractors find the ones that are stuck, the ones that the body does not correct. The body's always uh, defending itself against malposition against misalignment against subluxation and you know one of the components of subluxation that is uh, virtually unknown in the profession but well established in the research is something called segmental buckling and for anybody that's, that's watching that's not been to one of the seminars that has not uh, heard about segmental buckling I'm sorry segmental buckling I strongly encourage them to look it up uh, John Triano has written a lot about segmental buckling. You could say it's an AKA for the misalignment component of the subluxation, well established in the research. And when a joint buckles or misaligns and gets stuck in that position, what chiropractors call a fixation, you're getting, there's a lot of components to a subluxation. When a joint is stuck, we call it a fixation. It's buckled, therefore it's misaligned, and the body can't correct it. 
in, with its own um, muscles, those are the ones that we stumble on as chiropractors. Those are the ones we have the option or the opportunity to correct. Uh, the, you know, the, the first time I heard about this was in Joe Strauss's philosophy class, philosophy 801, our first quarter in school. And when I, I was already aware of chiropractic philosophy from my family background, and when he said, we are going to teach you a method based on the innate awareness of the vertebra, the body's own innate awareness of the subluxation. I was blown back in my chair and I said, wow, chiropractors even have a, an inborn innate intelligence way of examining the spine and finding the subluxation. It was again called the adio analysis above, down, inside out, because this is the body's own way of correcting its own subluxations. And when it can't correct them, it continues to attempt to pull them back into place. So that started my journey, and I'm still as passionate about it as I ever was because it really works. The bottom line is you can make a very specific adjustment, a very gentle adjustment. It particularly lends itself to a specific adjustment in the upper cervical spine because, the again, the mechanoreceptors there, these little sensory receptors, are so abundant there that it activates these muscles in a very deliberate manner, and there's nothing nothing more advanced than nature itself. That's why we call it advanced muscle palpation because it's advanced because it's based on this really precise, really sophisticated mechanism. And I, you know, honestly, I get a little bit sad that chiropractors are so dependent on outside technology. I think x-rays are great. Instrumentation is great. It uses many indicators as you can to find the subluxation and increase your confidence that you're on the right level and you're correcting the subluxation in the right direction, but there is nothing, period, nothing more precise, nothing more sophisticated than these little muscle spindles. And they are in conversation with the most complex, most sophisticated, uh, you know, uh, intelligence on the planet, the innate intelligence. And the, and the innate intelligence uses the central nervous system. So I'm excited about this because it offers chiropractors a window to the spine that's based on the body's own knowledge of its subluxations. Can you tell I'm excited? Oh, yeah. And, you know, I, honestly, uh, I, I've been, um, you know, patiently waiting to ask you, um, how, does, how does this type of method um, help aid, let's just say a uh, specific of like an old injury and somebody's been like chronically subluxated for a long time. Um, does this speed up the actual innate intelligence kicking on inside of that person to heal quicker or to manifest into better health faster? Well, you can't get in chiropractic. You can't improve on correcting subluxations, whatever method you're using. If you're correcting subluxations, that's the best you can do for somebody we don't see ourselves as adding anything to or taking anything away from the body. We don't see ourselves as speeding up healing per se, that we see that as the role of therapy. So correcting subluxations in its own right is the best a chiropractor can do. If they want to add other services or therapies, that's their business. But as far as this innate approach or this adio approach to health, we simply correct the subluxation, unlock the subluxation, if you will, step back and let the body heal itself in its own, at its own pace. If, you, uh, if somebody wants to add something to that medically or wants to add something to that in terms of physical therapy or nutrition, that's their business. That's their right legally. Um, I prefer, um, I guess you could say old school. Uh, we used to, back in the day, we still call it straight chiropractic. I don't want to um, assume that I know more than the body knows about its own health. So we simply correct the subluxation and the body does an incredible job of uh, healing and incredible job of keeping that person in health uh, with that alone. And, and when I say with that alone, I'm saying it, it's funny because we say that almost as if that's a little thing, you know, Adjusting subluxation is simple, but it's a very big thing when innate intelligence goes to work. And we've all seen those chiropractic miracles in our office. Um, I, I oftentimes will, in a seminar, point people to that, uh, 
that movie that uh, Jennifer Garner starred in, uh, uh, Life is a Miracle, I think it was called. And the, 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 the child falls. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen the movie. I haven't. Well, I'm not going to give it away. I'm just going to say the, uh, the movie is about a religious miracle, which I believe in. But what really takes place in that movie is what I would call a chiropractic or a natural miracle where subluxation is corrected and a life is restored. I, I'm, I'm putting a plug in for a movie on your show. <laughs> You've made it to Cairo Hustle Live. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This episode is brought to you by Clothes for Cairo, Cairo Sushi, Barbara Eaton's 56 Day Chiropractic Boot Camp, California Jam, Move Well University, The Black Diamond Club, Pure Cairo Notes, The Cairo Dex App, Dr. Alok Trivedi, Cairo Spark, Cairo Graham, Chiropractic Wealth Management, Eight Weeks to Wellness, Integrative Freedom, and Element Mattresses. Let's hustle. It's okay. And, you know, I think that we all have a, a different way of communicating subluxation. And I think that that's really uh, interesting that you've found such a, uh, a dynamic and a simple matter. And I think that it's, uh, it, it conveys the message of chiropractic when we take a word that is dynamic yet simple. And I think that the way that the body self-regulates and self-heals is dynamic, yet, you know, simple. Right. And I think that a lot of the things that you're talking about have a very dynamic, you know, if we go down the rabbit hole of them, um, there's very many dynamic uh, moments in, in uh, you know, the way that the body evolves even. So once we get stuck or fixated uh, and subluxated, we're not flowing the way that we're supposed to with our dynamics. So it's, but, it's very know, complicated, but simple. Yeah, it's very powerful, too. We know now uh, through research that uh, we have uh, solidly established in the research, or the profession has, that when you make a chiropractic adjustment, it has an a influence on brain function. So uh, again, what more could a chiropractor want than to influence the function of the, of the CNS? Uh, it, more and more research is being done, uh, and and it's becoming more firmly established that a chiropractic adjustment, and again, more uh, specifically, uh, upper cervical adjustment, has a major impact on restoring communication between the body and the brain. And that overflows into organ function. That overflows into visceral function, cellular function, but what we like to say is holistic function. The whole person functions better when they're in touch with their brain. And uh, of course, the uh, a very simple analogy, the conduit uh, to and from the brain is the spine. And when a vertebra is misaligned and subluxated, it's interfering with the messages. It's obstructing those signals to and from the brain, the afferent signals informing the brain of the environment, the efferent signals back to the body. So if it's making decisions based on bad afferent information, then the body cannot function the way it's designed to. And all we're doing is restoring the body to its natural design. And when, again, when I say all, it sounds like I'm minimizing it, but all is all. There, there's, there's, there's nothing better that, that you can do for a person than to put them back in touch with their body's own healing ability. Yeah, that's very profound. And, and it, it, like we've been discussing, it's a small thing, but it's massive. Excellent. And uh, that's one of the, the keys to the, this, this conversation. Now, let's uh, switch gears just a little bit. And let's talk about, you know, you've been in uh, practice uh, over three decades. And um, let's just say that there's a chiropractic student out there that is coming out with a little self-doubt, you know, um, they don't really understand how to adjust. What are maybe a couple tips that you could give to them? Well, um, most of them are already doing the first one I'm going to mention. That's, that is take seminars. Uh, there's uh, certainly my, my favorite seminar is John Minority. Uh, the ICPA has an entire uh, host of seminars that are geared towards children, but they're uh, really going to improve your skills overall. A good Gonstead seminar, again, a John Minardi Thompson seminar. Um, uh, CBP has a lot of insight into the spine. It's not a segmental approach to the spine. <clears throat> Excuse me. Segmental approach to the spine, but posture has a, 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 a very uh, 
great bearing on, on the individual segments of the spine. So seminars are good. My seminar, I, I, I endorse my seminar. Uh, and, Please do. Yeah. Uh, well, it's in, you know, if you go to on Facebook, it's the Advanced Muscle Palpation page. Um, and our, my seminars are always locally organized. Uh, an individual, uh, I, uh, you know, by a local individual. I saw a recent, uh, Ken Wilson was popped up on here earlier. He did, yeah. He's organized several of my seminars out north, near Northwestern. He's now a young graduate and uh, go Ken. We're all rooting for you. And, you know, wherever I speak, it's usually a grassroots, uh, a, a, a grassroots um, uh, a local event. In other words, I don't have a sponsoring uh, organization and I don't sponsor my own seminars. So if somebody wants one of my seminars, they can contact me and say, hey, we'll reach out to the chiropractors in our locality or to the students at our school and we'll uh, we'll have you come out. It's that yes. So it happens pretty the organic other, for you. The other uh, components in terms of confidence are, um, you know, personal confidence. That's huge. Developing your personal confidence. Um, and uh, that's really a lifelong journey. Um, it's, it's also about caring. That's huge in practice is uh, personal caring. That was a big hurdle for me. Um, I thought I was a people person until I started interacting with the public based on on a business, chiropractic's a business. I didn't understand anything about business. Um, so there's confidence, there's caring. And another layer to it is, uh, and, it, and it's kind of tied in with confidence, is boldness. Because you may have confidence in correcting subluxations and the value of that. You may have personal confidence. You may have confidence in your skills as an adjuster. But then to communicate with boldness, which I'm sure is your one of your um, uh, your talent what, communicate with boldness is a whole nother thing because again, there's an ex transaction, there's an exchange of money. And I got very timid when I realized I had to take people's money and I, I wanted them to like me. And I suspected they were going to think I had a vested interest in, in what I was selling them. And so I, 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 I was really taken back when I was uh, for a number of years in practice because I didn't, I didn't want them to suspect I had this uh, this interest in taking advantage of them, so I wouldn't tell them. I wasn't bold enough to tell them what I knew was true, and um, I've gotten over that to a large degree. But I'm still that person that wants to be liked. And let me tell you, if there's a hurdle in practice, at least one of my biggest hurdles it was that. And 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 I know there's other students out there that are like me. So you have to find books and seminars and mentors that will help you get over those hurdles. Um, the, the number one thing I believe in successful practice is caring about people, being able to look in somebody's eyes and not, uh, not see another customer, another patient, another dollar bill, but to see the, the pain, I don't mean just the physical pain, the pain that comes along with life, see, see their need, uh, reach out to them as a person. And I can tell you many, any chiropractor has been in business for a while. Anybody that's been in business for a while can tell you when you're interacting with people, uh, you almost need to be a psychologist because people are uh, just struggling and they're struggling, not just with their health, but they're struggling in life. And I found that has been the uh, most important thing in, in developing my practice was learning to care. Yeah, that's uh, that's great advice. And I think that most people, even when they aren't doing good, they don't know where to go for help. So when I do all the chiropractic screens that I've done, I, I always say to you, well, one of the cool things about meeting us today is because most people don't know where to go or who to trust for their health concerns. Right. And that's the uh, same thing as when people come into you, um, they come from that position. They come from that mental state, like they don't know where to go or who to trust. And now they're actually trusting you. Right, exactly. And and in some respects, chiropractic has gotten a bad rap. Some of that is the fault of chiropractors themselves. And some of that is because they have preconceived ideas of what a doctor of any kind should do. Oh, you're there to treat my symptoms and my pain. And uh, we're, we, are, we care about people's pain. We care about their symptoms. But our job is to correct subluxations and the body sorts out what it can do for them, which is a lot. But 
when when all they see you as is and and you know, borrow an expression as a big aspirin you're you're starting you're 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 starting in the negative you're starting behind the eight ball they're they're not understanding that chiropractic is uh fundamentally neurological they don't even know what that means they don't understand that the brain controls the body if you were to if you say well chiropractic benefits the brain or my favorite saying is chiropractic for the sake of the brain i have a facebook group page on uh, by that name chiropractic for the sake of the brain is huge but people say oh yeah i need to think more clearly which it does ha impact cognition but more importantly than just thinking more clearly it's it's the primitive areas of the brain that control your body chemistry. Remember Reggie's chemistry of life. Mm -hmm. Your entire health is based on good balance in your chemistry. That chemistry is derived. And uh, I have some patients walking in here. We're going to have to wrap this up. Uh, but that, I apologize. That's okay. Uh, large family with children. Uh, that, <laughs> they're, looking, they're, they're looking for you to find their subluxations. They've exactly. come to the right place. <laughs> hey, guys, be with you in a little bit. Uh, so body chemistry is controlled neurologically and and subluxations interfere on a segmental level at the IVF, but also now we know uh, in, in a proprioceptive way, they interfere with brain function. There's nothing bigger than that. You remember B, BJ Palmer, uh, a slip on a sidewalk is a small thing. It, it begins, a subluxation begins as a very small thing, and then it has deleterious effects unknown deleterious effects for that individual. It may show up in any number of ways, symptomatically or not necessarily show up as pain and symptoms. It may show up just as their ability or inability to function at their optimum, their inability to be the best piano player, the best football player, the best parent. You know, chiropractic is important to everyone because subluxations impact people on every level. You interfere with the function of the brain, you're interfering with the function of the body. And I even think it was Didi, uh, the founder of chiropractic, said that a subluxation is a lesion on the spine. I'm not familiar with that quote. That's interesting. A lesion yeah. on the spine. Yep. And uh, I think uh, that comes from the chiropractic adjuster, 1912. That's like the the only massive uh, chiropractic book I've read. I've, I've uh, I dove into that about four years ago, but yeah, it's fascinating to chat with you. Um, if people want to uh, bring you out to their um, uh, city or to have you teach a seminar on the advanced muscle uh, palpation, um, wh where do they go and how do they get in touch? Well, with they you? can get a hold of me through Facebook, uh, Nick Spano. Um, there's a lot of Nick Spanos, but I'm the chiropractor. Uh, they can go to the advanced muscle palpation page. Um, there's two pages, an old one that's not in use, that's black and white, but the new one's all color and it's got a couple of thousand followers. Uh, they can get a hold of me through email, nickspanodc at gmail.com. You got to put that DC in there uh, after my name. Uh, or they can call me personally. My cell phone number is 570 250 0736. And I'd be happy to speak to them. It's really not hard these days to put on an event because it's all Facebook driven, social media driven. And we, I help people set up the event page and then they, they just invite all their local uh, chiropractors or chiropractic students. And usually the seminar fills up pretty quickly. People, people have told me through the years many times, I've been waiting years for you to come to such and such Illinois or some city in California and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's very satisfying for me, but it's also frustrating because uh, this, this is a very slow way to uh, promote this method, but it's, it's, it's a, it's a freeway. Facebook is a, it's very simple. So are there any events that you have coming up over the next uh, year? I have a few scheduled, uh, actually be in Brazil next month. I've been, I've taught, um, a uh, handful of times, half a dozen times in South America, three times, I think it was three times last year in Brazil and once in Argentina. And then, um, so this year, Brazil next month, uh, then there is, um, uh, there's three upcoming seminars here in Pennsylvania through the Chiropractic Fellowship. There is, uh, we're in discussion about a seminar 
uh, in Colorado and a seminar, potentially a seminar in Italy, which would be exciting. I'm full blood Italian, never been to Italy. So uh, we're looking forward to that, hopeful about that. Yeah, Th those are those two are in discussion, Colorado. Uh, but we, I, I don't typically like to do more than eight or 10 seminars in a year. So I, I've been telling folks I've got uh, room for one or two more seminars in my schedule if people want to get a hold of me. Awesome. Well, I love the fact that you're uh, getting global. I love the fact that you're so passionate. I didn't even get to ask you two to three questions. I really wanted to. Go ahead. So, uh, well, they're a little bit early. So give me one more question. Okay. So, so what have you done to motivate yourself to keep your momentum so strong as a practicing chiropractor? Well, my wife asks me a similar question when she sees, uh, the fact that I'm banging my head against the wall to try to get this method some momentum and to get it recognized for what it should be. Um, she's often said to me, you know, why do you keep doing this? You, you really get frustrated that it's not better known or you've, uh, you know, you haven't taught as many people as you'd like to teach. And I say, you know, what compels me the most to keep going is that it works when I'm in my office and people will say to me and, I know every chiropractor has their uh, stories to tell, but people will literally, literally say to me, you know, I went to another chiropractor for six months or a year. And in one visit, one adjustment, you've done more for me than that chiropractor did, did in an entire year. And not to be falsely humble, but I say, listen, that's not me. That's this method I'm using. It actually gets me right on the spot, that, right on the subluxation that needs to be corrected. And so it just works. And so it, it pushes me forward when I, when I see, you know, again, very often, uh, very often the success stories I could tell are people that have been to other practitioners, physical therapists, other chiropractors, orthopedists. Um, and I've seen a lot of those in the decades that I've been in practice, 35 years I've been in practice. I've seen those chiropractic miracles that, um, you know, that we were promised when we were in school. And I credit it to this method because, again, it's putting my hands literally right on the subluxation, the subluxation that the body is aware of, the subluxation that I haven't found through trying to get things symmetrical. You know what I'm saying? I'm not just saying, well, there's a bump on this side and I got to push it down. It's much more sophisticated than that or advanced than that when you're using this uh, mechanism that's neurological. These muscles are communicating with the brain neurologically and they are defensive meth uh, muscles. When a muscle is stretched from origin to insertion, it gets, becomes activated through these muscle spindles because they are stretch receptors. They become active, they guard the joint, they try to reposition the joint, but when the joint is fixated, I could talk a lot about that, but when the joint is internally fixated, and they can't correct the subluxation, the muscles continue to be active and allows the chiropractor to find the subluxations, subluxations that the body is aware of and trying itself to correct. Also activated, by the way, by little ligamentous receptors, a whole other topic, uh, scientific topic uh, that we discussed in the seminars. Yeah, and you know what you said, uh, that that's what keeps you uh, mom that's what keeps your momentum going because you're just so passionate about chiropractic Absolutely. and you're passionate about getting people better and detecting correcting subluxation Absolutely So I mean that's a pretty simple yet a big answer and uh that's that's pretty cool that you were able to share that with us Um last question um is is it is it um I hear a lot of times people say it's the best time of of your life to become a chiropractor or it's the best time of in the history to be a chiropractor. I have a lot to say about that, but there is a grassroots movement back towards subluxation correction in the profession. So it's a very exciting time for those of us that are passionate about correcting subluxations. Politically, I'm real hopeful. <laughs> I'm not hopeful for the profession politically, but in terms of young students and chiropractors learning the power of traditional or straight chiropractic now is the time more than any other time with that i i apologize i'm gonna have to run but this has been a blessing and i really appreciate your patience we've had so many technical snafus and you were just
perfectly patient with me. I really appreciate that. Hey, no problem, Doc. Um, I'm just going to send one quick shout out to Cairo Graham, Chris, Christopher Collins. If you guys want to get a massive following on your Instagram accounts and to do some marketing through your Instagram channel, um, get into that scroll because everybody is on social. And if you guys want to get social on social, reach out to Cairo Graham. Um, Dr. Nick, uh, have a blessed day and uh, go, go, out, go out there and find those subluxations and correct them. Awesome. Thank you, man. All right, we'll see you. God bless. Yeah. Thank you for listening to Cairo Hustle Live. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.